Welcome to one of the most hyped but divisive, brilliant but at the same time problematic phones the world has ever seen. We've literally just had the P30 Pro a few months ago, which had an incredible camera and an off the charts battery life, but now the Mate 30 Pro is Huawei's new kingpin and let me tell you, it really is something. Huawei's Mate series has always been their plus sized maxed out smartphone lineup for the Pro user and that has not changed here. Compared to the P30 Pro's 6.47 inch display, which was pretty good, the Mate comes with a 6.53 inch OLED Horizon display, or to put that another way, one massive curve. You've probably already seen the curved displays on Samsung phones, well this is another level, it almost bends 90 degrees around the sides, pretty reminiscent of Vivo's recent Next device, but there's a difference. Whilst Vivo's sides were completely for show, Huawei uses them, you can double tap and slide to adjust volume or you can use it for a customizable shutter button in the camera. I didn't actually find accidental touches a problem either, it looks like the sides disable themselves depending on the situation. Worth noting is that the resolution has remained 1080p, which means it's not going to be as sharp as Samsung or Apple's best, but at the same time it's a massive improvement over the P30 Pros, with a completely new colour rendering engine. The only notable caveat being this notch. Just when it looked like Huawei had decided to trim this protrusion down on their phones, the Mate 30 Pro has a pretty sizeable thing up there. The notch is there so that it can house the sensors needed for 3D face unlocking, which should be even faster and more secure than before. But I gotta say on first impression, I don't love the asymmetry going on here. The fact that the sides are really slim is great, but then the bottom chin is one width and the top a completely different width. I'd almost rather just have a consistent border like the last phone. In contrast, I think the back looks pretty amazing. It's out there enough to feel next generation, but the way they've done it still feels somewhat familiar. In the hand, it's not entirely different to the P30 Pro, with familiar chamfers and curves, and the rounded corners do somewhat help with the grip. That said, you can now tell the camera has become an even more significant part of this phone's proposition, with it now dominating the entire top half and the colour options now extend further. You've got black, which is simple but effective, you've got space silver, cosmic purple and then what I thought was really cool, emerald green. In terms of the colour itself, I think I prefer the purple, it's the kind of phone I could imagine an alien race from the future using, but the green has a new coating. Its top is glossy glass but transitions to a matte fingerprint resistant and anti-slip coating at the bottom. Pretty genius, this is what I want to see more of. There's also a couple of vegan leather options which are more durable than glass and I don't hate the way they look at all and I can't stress what a benefit it is to not need to keep cleaning your phone every two minutes. Final bit of hardware to note is in terms of audio, there is no headphone jack here and because of how the earpiece is embedded in the display, it's not loud enough to form a stereo pair, so when you're listening to music, the audio is pretty much just coming from the bottom of the phone. Now, aside from what I've just mentioned, there are four areas where the Mate is even better than the P30 Pro, powerful reasons to want to go out and buy one, but also two serious caveats. In case there was any doubt at all, one of the most significant upgrades comes in the form of its cameras. Whilst it did have some notable weaknesses, the P30 Pro was already my favourite smartphone camera and the Mate only extends this. The phone has a brand new 40 megapixel ultra wide cinema camera, which is specialised for taking video, and in the admittedly limited environment I had to try it in, it looks like a leap above any other smartphone out there. You remember how Huawei completely changed the game with night mode photos on their P20 Pro, it kind of looks like they've just done the same thing for video here. This new camera means it can now also record 4K video at 60 frames per second, something that was lagging on past Huawei phones. And, this is my favourite bit, record slow motion video at 7680 frames per second. Yeah, you heard that right, that is 8 times slower than Samsung's super slow motion video, so slow that everyday scenes literally look like static photos. And that's on top of the standard slow motion modes which are now cleaner and sharper than before. The phone also has a new level of stabilisation which I'm really curious to test against the new iPhones. You might remember the P30 Pro's 5x optical zoom camera, it made headlines, it was revolutionary, but at the same time Huawei must have decided that the sacrifices weren't worth it here, because the Mate sticks to 3 times. Number 2. You might well know that Huawei is one of the only companies that makes its own chips to power its own smartphones. Well, the Mate 30 Pro is their first phone ever to use the Kirin 990. The actual performance gain is going to depend a lot on the scenario you're in, but to give you an idea, the 10 graphics cores we had before have been bumped up to 16 and the CPU itself has been overclocked. Also worth noting is that the 5G version of this phone will have a slightly different, even faster version of this chip, which has 5G built into it. 
Number three, I'm weirdly excited about this phone's battery, especially after seeing how their last phone could last two full days with medium usage. This new device takes the 4200 mAh we had before and ups it to 4500, and combined with the ever more aggressive battery management of their new software, I've got high hopes, but we shall see in a detailed battery test soon. The Mate has the same 40 watt supercharging as before, but now brings 27 watt super fast wireless charging too, with the whole suite of accessories to take advantage of it. And I get it, in a lot of senses wireless charging is old news, but with that amount of power, this has got the potential to be as fast as many phones' wired solutions. Now, the last main advantage is that security has been bolstered, the fingerprint scanner in the display has been upgraded, and the face scanning faster than before. Plus, that new notch actually hides a gesture sensor, which lets you do crazy stuff like this. I really don't know why. Okay, that's all well and good, but two main issues. Let's start by talking about the elephant in the room. You've probably heard of the US ban. Everyone was talking about it a few months ago, but even though the conversation has died down, the implications very much remain. So, to answer one question, yes, this phone is running Android, Android 10 to be exact, and with MUI 10 on top of that, it's as aesthetically slick as ever, with polished animations and improved performance. The camera app has been overhauled, having ditched the Leica-style font and interface in exchange for something far cleaner, and I also like the new status bar, which has a transparency layer for that extra touch of minimalism. But there's no Google Play Store, and in fact, no Google services at all. Here's what I think is happening. Huawei wants to and is planning to launch the phone in Europe, otherwise they wouldn't have given us a European price like this, but I think they've not actually set an official date in the hopes that Google Play services arrive soon. As a backup plan, in case those services don't arrive, Huawei talked about how they've invested a billion dollars in incentivizing new developers to come on board into their own app gallery, which they may use as a complete alternative. Fingers crossed they get Google services back though, that would be better. Second thing is price. At 1099 euros, for 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, wow is this expensive. But if it's any consolation, the storage can be expanded using the company's NM cards. So, in summary, there is so much to be excited about here. The fact that we've just had this brand new chipset, the fact that video quality has now been brought onto par with photo quality, the new battery and charging speeds, all so impressive, but all these improvements, all this exciting stuff, makes what's actually happened all the more disappointing. The US ban is real, it is here, the consequences are felt now. But the fact that Huawei is having this event in Europe, the fact that they're inviting global media, means they clearly have their sights set on Western markets and that they're not giving up yet. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be amazing. And there's plenty more stuff on this phone, the iPhones, as well as whatever OnePlus is up to, coming very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I will catch you in the next one.